What is going on guys? This is Daniel, and today I'll be breaking down a play that has increased in popularity this past season in the NBA, and I'm calling it the Flare Slip because that's what it is. So I'll be breaking down how a lot of NBA teams are running this to great success, and I'll show you why it's so effective. Let's get to it. Here the Lakers run it, and it starts with the ball on top, and what happens is Brandon Ingram will set a flare screen for D'Angelo Russell. And what the Lakers will really look for is Ingram on the slip to the basket, and here it works perfectly, and Ingram gets a dunk. Let's watch this play again and see why it works. So the Pelicans will attempt to switch this flare screen, which is what a lot of defenses do against this play. And against the flare itself, with Russell going to the corner, that is a successful switch. Ingram's man takes Russell. But where the switch breaks down is the guard guarding Russell has to immediately take Ingram. All of this is happening so fast, and here Drew Holiday does not react in time and does not cover Ingram, who gets a dunk. The Bulls run it, and Marcus Smart, who's guarding the screener, will point and communicate a switch with Rozier, but Rozier is too busy fighting over the screen. He's not on the same page as Smart. If the switch was done properly, Rozier would have denied Moro on the slip to the basket. Instead, it's a layup. This play definitely causes miscommunication, and this is a terrific example. Both defenders involved go to Rozier on the slip, and then when the ball is passed out, both rush out to the three-point line, and after that, everything is chaos, and they leave Rozier open for the shot. So that's the basic introduction of how this play works, and now I'll go over some keys for this play to work best. The Blazers like to run this play, and it's crucial for this play to be run relatively fast. So Harkless will slip without even really setting a screen, and he can do this if he feels the slip is going to work, it catches Iguodala flat-footed, and it's a layup. This goes without saying, but another key is that the passer, the guy on top, is a good passer, which LeBron obviously is, and here he's running the play, and the Warriors foul. Also, for the slip to work, the lane needs to be clear. So what the Grizzlies do is have a big man pass, here Zach Randolph, which draws out the center, David West. So West would normally be in the paint, but because he's guarding the ball, he's not in the paint, which frees up Allen's slip. Another way to clear the lane if the defense helps a lot in the paint is with decoy action. So here, during the flare screen, the Lakers have screening action on the weak side, which serves to occupy Davis, so when Ingram slips the screen, Davis is not prepared to protect the basket. It's also important to have a good passing angle, and most of the teams make the pass from up top, and that works, but I also like how the Grizzlies do it, as notice how Gasol is closer to the opposite elbow, this gives him a good passing angle, and he finds Allen on the slip, though good help defense by the Warriors, and Allen misses. Now, the play won't always work, so it's important to have another option after the flare slip action, and that's what the Spurs do well here, as after the flare slip is ineffective, they'll immediately set up a pin down for Kawhi, and he hits the three. Similar execution from the Cavs, the flare slip is ineffective, but then they go right to a pin down for Kyrie, and he's open for the three. Moving on to how teams attempt to guard the play. In many of the clips I've shown, the defense tried to switch, they just didn't communicate correctly. On this play, the Warriors defend it well by switching, and the key is that Klay Thompson leaves little opportunity for Harkless to get the ball on the backdoor slip, and then after that, the Blazers offense dies and they turn it over. But switching it is extremely tough. The Cavs run it, and it seems as if the Warriors switched it correctly with Livingston on Jefferson, but Livingston gets called for a holding foul, and you can see how Livingston is still on the high side of Jefferson, still making that backdoor cut a possibility. Like the Warriors, on this play, the Wizards attempt to switch, and on the switch, Beal does a nice job of taking away the slip, but Wall closes out a tad too aggressively on Thomas. That's all it takes for Thomas to drive, 
and that results in the Crowder Corner 3. Even if the defense switches it correctly, you may now have a mismatch. So the Warriors run Flair slip and the Spurs switch promptly, but now Aldridge is guarding Curry and Parker is guarding Livingston and the Warriors have their pick of mismatches and they decide to throw to Livingston who scores on the post up. The other way to defend it is to not switch. So on this play, McCaw sticks with Crowder, not allowing the slip, but now Curry has to fight through and get to Thomas in the corner. And there was a bit of miscommunication, which was why Curry is a step behind, but you can see the danger of not switching. It could give up a corner three. This time, the Wizards don't switch it, and Thomas is the screener on this play and give him a lot of credit for setting a real screen, and then Bradley, instead of going to the corner, decides to use the screen as a back screen and go right to the basket, and it's a layup. In this video, I've solely focused on the flare slip as a set play, but keep in mind this can be utilized in the flow of an offense. So Corver here, moving without the ball, sets a flare screen for Jefferson, and he may have had an opportunity to cut back door. He doesn't, but you get the idea of how moving off the ball, setting flare screens, and slipping them can work. Well, there you have it guys. Defenses are switching a bunch and coaches are always thinking of new ways to counter switches and the slip is definitely one of them This is nothing new and the flare slip is a nice set play that can give a lot of teams trouble and it's very tough to defend Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time